What's up, Eagles fans, and welcome back to the film. We're presented by Chickies and Pete's. I'm Fran Duffy. I'm here in my basement as I'm continuing my study of the Eagles 2020 rookie class, and we're going to continue with the second to last pick, and that's Auburn offensive lineman Prince Tega Winogo. Very physically talented player, relatively still new to the game, but a guy that's got a lot of physical ability that we will cover here uh, on this segment. Now, one of the big things, one of the big buzzwords you'll hear with offensive line play is the ability to bend. And what, what does that mean? What, why is that so important? Well, when you're talking about a guy's ability to bend, you want to see that flexion, not just in his knees, but you also want to see it in his ankles. And that lower half athleticism, that flexibility, that natural ability to bend really makes everything else. It's a really good base to work off because it makes everything else a little bit easier. Because if you've got that trait, if you've got that ability, we can fix other things about your game. But if you can't bend, it makes it a little bit more difficult. And so that's one of the things I wanted to hit on here with Prince Tega Wanogo is that while he's got other parts of his game that he needs to get a little bit better at, that ability to bend will really put you in a good situation moving forward. And you can kind of see that bend in a couple of different ways. And so as we're going through, these are plays that I tagged of him as I was studying him last summer, last fall, and this spring. I, I studied him a couple times throughout the course of the process just to really get a good bead on his ability, his potential moving forward into the NFL. Now, here is Prince Teguanogo. This is the opener last year against Auburn or against Oregon. He is the Auburn left tackle, number 76. Remember, I did my breakdown of Jack Driscoll. There he is there, number 71. Did that a couple of weeks ago. Make sure you go check that out if you haven't seen that already. But here's Prince Teguanogo. He is the left tackle there in a three point stance. And what you're going to see here is him come off the ball with really good pad level, natural knee bend. And look at right there, you can see he keeps his eyes up and he's able to see what he's hitting, keeps his hands inside, and he's able to really just be in a good athletic position. Now look, he doesn't have great power to be able to move guys, but he gets a little bit of movement there. And again, that's just something I saw the bend there, and I said, okay, he's got that ability to kind of sink his hips into contact, and now he can drive his feet and get a little bit of movement on contact. That's that first look at bend. Again, here he is, and what it could look like in the trenches. That's just one of those little things that I like to be able to see from alignment on tape. And again, when you've got that ability to bend, all right, go back. If you were able to rewind and go back uh, to when you played youth sports, or if you were in gym class and your coach or your teacher may have said, get into a good athletic position. And if you think back, what did that look like? That was like knees bent, hands out, right? And you think of playing baseball. If you're an infielder, they said, hey, you know, get your knees down. You got to get into a good athletic position. If you're playing defense in basketball, right, you get into a good athletic position that allows you to move side to side and it just gets your, your good base to be able to work from. It's the same. It carries through. There's sport after sport after sport and multiple positions, multiple cases where that is a very important thing. And it's the same thing for offensive line play. Because again, if you're talking about pass protection, the ability to slide and be able to uh, mirror a defensive lineman, that's super, super important, but also the ability to play through contact because if you are playing straight-legged, if you've got that stiffness in your knees, now you've got the ability to be thrown off balance. You're not in that comfortable, strong stance to be able to stay up, stay off the ground because balance is such an important part of playing the offensive line position as well. So that ability to bend really helps create so much both in the run game and in the passing game. And there's going to be a lot of scenarios where we're going to see that uh, throughout the course of this tape in this breakdown. Now, this is going to be him just as a puller. And really, if you're talking about athleticism, that's one of the big things you're going to see here with Prince Tego Winogo. He's going to be pulling this, what is basically counter run scheme from the offensive line. He's going to be responsible for blocking that play side linebacker who's going to scrape over the top and try and make this play in the hole. And again, you're going to see that athleticism really kind of show itself here on this run play. You see how fluid he's able to get out of his stance, locks onto the target at the next level. He ends up on the ground here. He falls over a defensive lineman, but creates the hole that leads to a touchdown. That goes, you know, that starts with the offensive line, or the, the athleticism, rather, along the offensive line. Again, there he is, 76. You see him pop out of his stance real quick, get up to the second level, latch on, and create that hole big enough for the running back to reach the end zone. Now, one of the things that really stood out to me about Prince Tegawanogo is that while he lacked power, all right, and power, the ability to move others against their will, I thought he was pretty strong in that he was able to prevent others from moving him against his will, okay? So he's got the ability to drop his weight, drop his anchor, which again, that goes back to that ability to bend, drop your weight and anchor. We'll see him here, again, left tackle, number 76. He's gonna drop his weight and not give up a whole lot of ground here against this bull rusher. 
His technique is not perfect, and we're going to see that throughout the course of this tape, okay? He's got some things to work through in terms of his hands and his timing and things like that, but he's strong. He doesn't give up a lot of ground on contact, and he's got the light feet. He's got the strong core, the balance to be able to maintain, you know, his control of his body throughout the course from snap to whistle. Just, again, another example, gets to the lineman. The lineman gets into his chest, but he doesn't give up a lot of ground. He's able to stay up as the pass is completed for a 22-yard gain. Now, the next play we're going to take a look at here against Mississippi State is another play where he's just able to get up into space. You know, when he gets up to the second level, the third level, I've got a few plays sprinkled in here with all these plays that I tagged of him, but uh, they're just fun to be able to watch. And again, you get a sense of his athleticism, his movement skills, not the end-all be-all along the offensive line, but in my opinion, it's, it's become really more important over the course of the last few years as defensive linemen have gotten bigger, stronger, faster, more explosive, more fluid. Uh, you know, you see just these freak shows come out along the defensive front seven. Offensive linemen have to be able to match that to a certain extent. They don't need to be uh, the crazy freakish athletes, but they at least have to have a certain level of athletic ability. Prince Tegawanogo certainly has that. You know, he certainly hits those minimums there. Again, he's here on the left tackle. You're going to see him get up to the second level, and you just see the movement skills in space. This is going to be another touchdown run for Auburn where he's able to get to the second level, do just enough to keep that linebacker from getting to the back. Now, again, I've got another second-level block here. This time, you're going to see him lined up on the right side. And one thing you see often from this Auburn offense is the use of what are called tackle over formations where they're going to take the tight end and they're going to put him where the left tackle usually is and now they're going to put the left tackle and basically line them up where the tight end usually is and what that does is it creates a pass strength right and also a run strength for the offense and that can throw off how the defense lines up. It can create some mismatches. You can get a little bit tricky in terms of how you deploy your receivers and different gadget plays. It opens up uh, some, uh, some different wrinkles in your offensive playbook and some can create some tells on the defense. The Eagles did this a few years ago a number of times uh, with the way that they lined up. Now, they do this often with Prince Tegawanogo. Again, lining him up on the right side next to Jack Driscoll. And again, all that does is it creates, now you've got a whole lot of beef here on the right side of your offensive line. You've got a center, right guard, right tackle, and your left tackle all on one side. And all you're going to see here from Prince Tego Inogo is he's going to link up to the linebacker level, and he's going to put a linebacker on his back. And again, the way that he attacks this block, watch how he sinks his hips going into contact, but he's able to do so not lunging, he's not leaning. Watch him sink his hips with his eyes up so that he can see what he's striking. Again, that gets back to that bend and that flexibility. Eyes up, drives his feet on contact. He gets two guys on the ground as they're able to get in for a touchdown. Awesome block there uh, by Prince Tegawanogo. Now, let's take a look at him back at the left tackle spot, this time in pass protection. Again, I want to talk more about his strength, his core strength and his balance, because that is an important part of being an effective pass protector in the NFL. Again, here's Prince Tegawanogo at his left tackle spot. He's going to be matched up on this right defensive end here for Mississippi State. Now, the defensive end is going to come off the ball, and you're going to see Prince is going to throw his first punch here. First contact, but doesn't quite strike. The defensive lineman is able to avoid that punch, and he is able to get his hand inside. That little stab move right here. And I want, want you to watch. Prince doesn't lose his balance. He gets rocked back a little bit, but he's able to keep his feet going. He's able to stay in control of his body, maintain focus on the block, still ride his feet, ride the arc with the defensive lineman, doesn't lose his balance. A lot of times what you'll see is when an offensive lineman kind of gets punched in the face like this, all right, he takes that punch square to the chest, they might lose their balance, they might try and throw their hands, their feet stop, right? Now they're, they're all thrown off kilter and the defensive lineman can kind of turn the corner. He's able to maintain control of his body, ride the arc with the defensive lineman and rush him past the quarterback. That allows for a completion downfield, 39 yards to the house. Now. We're going to see another play in the run game. Same game, Mississippi State. All right, this is the second game uh, that I studied early on. And you're going to see Prince Tegawanogo here once again in the run game. And what I love here, and here he is once again at left tackle, is you're going to see once again that lower half flexibility, his ability to maintain control of the block and put himself in position to create a lane for the ball carrier. Because again, he's going to come off the ball, watch his pads, He's able to sink his pads, eyes still stay up, he's not leaning, he's not lunging, and he knows where this back wants to be able to get this ball inside into the B-gap. 
He's able to drive his feet. And what I like about Prince Tego Inogo, again, he's not the most powerful guy. He's not going to consistently drive people off the ball like, you know, what we see from Matt Pryor or Brandon Brooks, some of those bigger guys, right? But he is always going to strain to finish. And it might not always be torquing guys to the ground like we saw a couple of plays ago, but you're always going to see him giving that extra effort, running his feet on contact. And again, once he gains control, he realizes he's blocking this guy inside out. You can see that he's kind of straining there to try and push this guy out of the frame. I'll play at full speed, and you can kind of see it there. Just a little bit of a hint of the fin right there, that strain to fin right there on the back end where he's always trying to kind of get that last push in just kind of speaks to his mentality as an offensive line. A little bit late off the ball, that's a little bit of a consistent issue for him is that his timing, getting out of his stance, his play speed's got to get a little bit better, especially uh, when they are on the road. You can especially see that is that he can be a little bit slow out of his stance, but you, again, running his feet, you can see that lower half flexibility to be able to maintain control of this block. It's not the prettiest thing. This goes what? It's a five-yard gain in the run game. But again, a couple of things that you can kind of take away here to see the skill set that he's bringing to the table. Again, is this going to be the best play you're ever going to see? It's a five-yard gain in the run game. But I thought you saw a couple of things that we just like to see, right? You saw the ankle flexion, the lower half flexibility to be able to maintain control of the block, the strain to finish, a consistent theme that we saw from Prince Teguanogo on film. Now, we're going to go a few plays later, same game, Mississippi State, where he's once again going to release up to the second level. He actually gets up to the third level of the defense here on this play. Again, here's Prince Teguanogo at left tackle. He's going to release up into space here. And you just see kind of unique athleticism for a guy along the in the trenches. Again, a little bit late off the ball. You could see that he was kind of the last guy out of his stance there. Again, that's something that he's going to have to kind of work through a little bit. But you see the ability to get up to the next level, make that play. Great job by the back or by the receiver here to play off this block. But the, an offensive lineman to be able to kind of get into that search and destroy mode and locate and finish on a moving target. That's a big time athletic play from an offensive lineman, a guy who's 300 pounds. Really nice job up at the third level of the defense. Now, one of the th ways you'll also see his athleticism is just the way that he's able to get out of his stance. I've mentioned a couple times that he could be a little bit late in terms of his timing, but you could see those explosive elements in his body when he's got to get out, when he's got to fire out of his stance, especially in pass protection against a wider technique. All right, so again, here's Prince Tego Winogo with the way that this protection is set up. He's going to be responsible for this nine technique, this stand-up linebacker, the stand-up rusher here off the edge. He's got to get to his landmark to try and block this guy, all right? So you're going to see a lot of guys, most guys that are playing left tackle at the college level, they're going to really struggle to get out to that spot. And they might false step uh, with their pass set, right? And that might throw them off balance and uh, cause them to be a little bit late as well, just because they're panicking to get out there and protect against this guy. But you're going to see just how explosive he is with this kick step as he is able to fire out of that stance, stay in control. Again, what do we talk about with the offensive linemen? One good way to be able to see how good his feet are is to just kind of watch his helmet. You don't want him to look like a bobblehead doll out there, right? You want to see that helmet stay clean, stay, you know, stay still. That way he's got you can see that he's able to maintain focus. His eyes aren't bouncing all over the place as he's trying to keep up with the pass rusher. So he fires out of his stance here. Maintains control, and then you see the athleticism just, again. Just kind of ride the hoop and just kind of watch this guy up the field. The defensive end really presents no problem at all. Becomes a 31-yard catch down the field. Nice block there by Prince Tegawanogo in pass protection. Now, uh, we're going to go to our last game that we're breaking down. This one is against Florida on the road uh, in Gainesville. Loud environment. I've been down there for a game. It can be pretty crazy uh, down there for these road games, especially rivals in the SEC. Auburn, Florida, great matchup. Now, you're going to see here Prince Tegawanogo Nogo, again, left tackle. He's going to drop back, and he's going to protect against this pass rusher, number seven. And again, he's going to be a little bit late out of his stance, all right? So the pass rusher is going to get kind of one step on him to start this play. But what I love to see from offensive linemen, and one thing that's really kind of grown on me is something that I'm looking for, are offensive linemen that can recover. And really, the, the reason why is that just like playing corner, right, you can play 60, 70, 80, game, any play, 80 plays in a game, and you might give up one or two plays, and now your, your game, your day, is defined by the fact that you gave up two touchdowns or you gave up two sacks, right, in pass protection as an offensive lineman. So you want to be able to see guys that can recover because 
more, more often than not, the guy on the other side, the defensive lineman, is going to have a little bit of an athletic advantage over you. And there, or there might you're you're going to get beaten at some point because you're moving in reverse. They're moving moving forward to you. They are the attackers, right? So there's going to be a lot of points where you're going to be you're going to be put in a position where you have to recover. Now. Prince Tego, no, this is kind of a self-inflicted reason that he's got to recover here, right? Because, again, he's going to be just a hair late. You can see that he's kind of the last guy to get out of his stance here. But what I really like is that you're going to see him kind of flip his hips and recover. And once he unlocks his hips, again, not an ideal situation, right? This is not ideal. He's a little bit late off the ball. And, really, you don't like offensive linemen to have to flip their hips to the sideline. You don't want to be in a position where you're like this because now – if this defensive lineman sticks his foot in the ground and attacks downhill, gets inside his pads, he's going to be in a tough spot to be able to anchor and drop his weight and protect against the bull rush. But, again, I just love being able to see that ability to unlock his hips, ride the guy downhill because he's just trying to turn the corner on him. Prince Teguanogo does a great job here of just unlocking his hips and riding this guy out of the frame. Again, so just the ability to recover I thought was really impressive here from Prince Teguanogo. It's not always going to be pretty along the offensive line. You're not going to have a great rep 60, 70, 80 times in a row. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to be a perfect specimen every single time you go out there. So how do you recover? Whether the defensive lineman does something, whether the scheme, you know, defensively they do something that you've got to be able to counteract, or if, you know, if you just do something a little bit off to start the play. Can you recover, put yourself back into a position to make the block? I thought that Prince Teguanogo did a nice job recovering here, unlocking his hips, riding this guy downhill. Nice job there on that play by Prince Teguanogo. Now, a couple plays later, we're going to see another rush in pass protection here, another rep from Prince Teguanogo. Again, matched up on a defensive end. This time the guy is a little bit closer to him, a little bit of a tighter technique. And I want you to just see the hand usage here from Prince Teguanogo. Because what he's going to do, very often he's not throwing a punch. What you'll see a lot from him is that he's trying to knock the hands down of the defensive lineman. And that's just a style thing. Some coaches teach it, some don't. And that's something that you can kind of fix. So really the big thing that I want you to see here. Number one, he misses that first strike, right? So now his chest is open. You can see that his chest is kind of wide open. You don't want to give up your chest more often than not if you're an offensive lineman. That's allowing the defensive lineman to get inside your pads. So you've got to, if you're going to do that, you need that strength. You need that anchor to be able to hold your ground because if you don't, you're going to get pushed back into the pocket, into the lap of the quarterback. So that defensive lineman tries to get inside the pads of Prince Teguanogo, but what I like here is that not only does Prince give up no ground, but he's also shows those fast hands after he misses that first little swat to try and knock the hands down to the defensive lineman. Watch how fast he's able to replace his hands and get them inside the pads of the defensive lineman. Keeps his feet going, right? So he never loses control of this block. He's not going to get called for holding. He's not lunging. Again, goes back to the knee bend, right? Because if he plays straight leg, you can see the, the knee bend there. If he plays straight up and his feet stop, and he holds on to that defensive lineman. Now he's lunging. Guess what happens? Easy, easy throw of the flag for the referee. They're going to throw it. You're going to call you holding every single time. If you've got heavy feet and if your legs lock up and get stiff and now you're getting drug along, that's going to be a penalty every single time. So again, going back to that lower half flexibility, that ability to maintain control of the block. You see the strong hands there. Locks onto that defensive end. Doesn't let go. Really impressive stuff there from Prince Teguanogo. And this is going to be another really impressive rep. And again, our last one that we're going to hit on, but it goes back to that athleticism and how that can just be kind of a launching point moving forward. There are things that you want to be able to correct, but a lot of things that you like. If you've got a guy that has that lower half flexibility, the foot quickness, those athletic traits really allow you to build off that moving forward. And again, Last rep we're going to see here, this is Prince Teguanogo going up against a wider technique defensive end. So he's going to have to get out of his stance and protect the corner against that wide technique, okay? So you're going to see him fly out, and I just want you to see the foot quickness, all right? Because not only are his feet moving up and down, but watch his hands, watch his head. He never looks like he's out of control. He looks like uh, he's nice, calm, and collected. It's like a duck on a pond, right? Underneath, those feet are going a million miles an hour. But up top, you see a nice, calm duck moving along the surface of the water. That's what you see here with Prince Teguanogo. Nice and calm, nice and collected. Effective feet allow for efficient hands along the offensive line. That's something we talk about over on the Eagle Eye in the Sky podcast. So when you've got those light feet, that allow you to be really effective with your hands. So... 
Again, what do we see to start things off? He's going to go for that little swat. Not everybody's going to teach that right along the offensive line, but you see how quick he's able to get his hands back inside. Quick hands, be able to replace, get inside the pads of the defensive lineman, stay square to the block, drop his weight. You can see the good knee bend throughout the course of that block. He's able to drop his weight. He gives up no ground and pass protection against the bull rush. Really good stuff there from Prince Tego Inogo. Hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. We saw a lot of the good stuff, right? You saw all the athletic traits. Obviously, we see those plays of him out in the second, third level. We might only see that once or twice a game if and when he plays in the NFL. It's more about the lower half flexibility, that ability to bend, that puts you in position to have success both in the run game and in the pass game. He's got to get a little bigger bigger and stronger. He's had some issues with some injuries throughout the course of his career that he'll need to kind of get through. But this is a guy that's got some physical traits. A lot of people in the media were very, very high on him. About a year ago, he was going in the first round of like every mock draft uh, that you would find on the internet. So this is a guy that uh, certainly has that first round pedigree that a lot of people were expecting out of, out of him uh, on the outside. Ends up falling to late day three for some other factors, but this is a guy with athleticism. He's got strength to be able to hold his ground. He's got the right mentality, that right temperament that you like. We saw some finish plays from him here uh, in this breakdown. Hope you guys enjoyed this segment here on Prince Tega Winogo. A lot of upside with him moving forward. Maybe not year one, but year two, year three. Going to be a fun player to be able to watch develop, and it's all going to start this summer. Thanks for joining us here on The Film Room, presented by Chickies and Pete's. We've got one more segment here. Join us next time. We'll be breaking down Stanford uh, pass rusher Casey Toole.